Hi y'all and welcome to 2024. I am recovering from a little bit of cold so I haven't shot any content over the past week like I normally would as we start designing our gardens into 2024. Um, this is the time of year that I'm getting back ready to start garden, at least preparation wise, and I know a lot of you are. Um, so I've been going through books I've ordered, some I've had for quite a while and I'm looking through them again. I've been going through like seed catalogs or online and looking at some seeds I might want to start. I'm not starting a ton this year, but I am going to start some vegetables and a few cut flowers. And then just generally some cut flower books on how to arrange tools needed, uh, specific varieties that are great. But when I was doing this process over the past couple weeks, uh, I also started redesigning the front garden bed. And I'll take you along that process here in the next video or so. But I realized I never provided you with a 2023 summer garden tour at the last house. I shot it. It was the day we moved out. It was a little rainy and drizzly and I wasn't sure how the footage came out and I ended up looking at that yesterday and decided it was good enough that I wanted to put it out and go ahead and get started in 2024 with the summer 2023 garden tour. It allowed me to look back at the varieties I had in my garden, what I want to repeat here, what I want to do differently, and overall just got me excited about the opportunities this new space is going to provide me. So I hope you enjoy and talk to you soon. Good morning y'all. It's moving day and I want to show you the garden one last time before we get all moved out. Uh, the movers will be here in less than an hour so this garden tour may be a little faster. Typically mine are about an hour for the big summer garden tour but we're going to start on this bed that I redesigned this spring. If you don't know who I am, welcome to my channel. My name's Matthew and I garden in Southwest Ohio Zone 6. I'm originally from Alabama and transplanted up here in 2016 for work. So we'll just get started on the garden. This bed um, was designed in January, December of last year and I planted all of these annuals in the space. Previously here there was a big uh, green spruce that we had removed last October and all of these begonias and sun patients have filled in really nicely. We have some tiny arborvitae here, and then in the middle is surrounded by Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangeas by Proven Winners. These are a newer variety, used to be called Let's Dance Can Can, and they changed the name um, a year or so ago, and they are reblooming really nicely for me. You can see the older blooms here have faded, these new ones are coming on, and in the center right here is a red obelisk beech, which has really nice, beautiful uh, burgundy leaves in the spring when it emerges. It's turned a little more green right now. It does get a little more shade, so that might be a reason, but I think it looks really striking here together with all of these beautiful annuals that are blooming right now. We're going to continue down the north side of the house. I'm going to tell you where these locations are. So if you want to plant these things in your garden, you'll get an indication of the light that they're getting on my home. This is an incredible hydrangea hedge that was planted about five years ago now, uh, five years and some months. And in between here, we have emerald green arborvitae. These do really well. They are staked. Um, we had a severe th storm that came through this morning, so they're a little droopy this morning, but they're dried enough now that they're kind of papery and you can use them for arrangements if you would like. It's sprinkling a little bit, but we're going to carry on for right now. we got a few perennials in here. This is pig squeak, also called Virginia. Pig squeak is kind of the common name. Some ferns in here. I think that's called lady in red. Got a boxwood tucked in here and there in between, right in front of these ferns. Uh, some carexes, and then over here we have a summer wine nine bark on standard, surrounded by some tater tot arborvitae. Now you'll see a lot of tater tot arborvitae in my garden. When I planted them two years ago, the sizing on them by proven winners was about one to two feet tall and wide. So this would have been a nice hedge. They've increased. They've since increased that sizing and it could get larger. So spacing these like I have may not be the best choice, but it's just going to depend on your zone and your growing conditions, how large those get. But this summer Y9 bark blooms white in the very early spring and has this beautiful dark foliage the rest of the season. We're going to take a look at the rest of the front right now while we're around the front. So you can get a whole view of this space. I really, really love 
all of these annuals. They've done incredibly well. They've actually started blooming more. The sun patients, I was having a bit of a lull in them, but it's been really warm here recently and they have certainly enjoyed all of the heat. Here we have an annual container that is looking really pitiful from the storm. It was gorgeous yesterday before it stormed, but we have some new proven winners per annuals in here. Uh, one Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, which isn't new, but there's a yellow one called uh, Supertunia Saffron Finch, which is really gorgeous. This is an Ipomea, or sweet potato vine, called Solar Power uh, Black. Um, Diamond Frost Euphorbia, uh, Orange Canna, or a Tropical coral looking canna in there and I think that's about all that's left in this container. We did have some uh, Dichondra Silver Falls in here but everything else kind of out competed it and I think it's kind of withered away. Down here at the bottom we have some endless summer hydrangeas. These are uh, bloom struck and you can see the blooms are pink in my soil conditions that have al high alkaline soil. I did put some soil acidifier down on these. Uh, they're a little purple. They're not completely pink. So it's kind of hard to bring the pH down here because we also have hard water. But they're looking pretty good and reblooming really well for me. This is a new one out this year that you may see in garden centers called Pop Star as well by Endless Summer. The blooms on it are really, really gorgeous there. It stays really tiny, a foot to two foot tall and wide, I think, uh, if I remember correctly. And it's just really, really beautiful, all this nice foliage here. So there's a little river of those that go kind of around here with some more in the background. Those are more of the bloom struck. We have a proven winners puffer fish hydrangea back there. And all of these hostas here that were gathered from Facebook Marketplace five to six years ago from tiny little uh, one divided starts there. I think I got them $3 a piece and you can see how beautiful they are in this space right now. So we continue around here. We have some more hydrangeas. These are Tough Stuff Aha and they stay pretty small, one and a half to two foot tall and wide as well. Uh, they're kind of in a lull. They got some new blooms under there, but they're still just a really beautiful color right here and a nice pop along the border. This is a great edging hydrangea for a border. Uh, you can, of course, these get eastern facing sun, so we're on the north side of the house now, and they tend to love this condition. So they get morning sun uh, through maybe lunch or so, and then they're protected from the hot afternoon sun, and they've done really well and love the spot quite a bit. This container has been a bit of a bust this year. Um, the actual Dichondra Silver Falls is looking really good, but the plants themselves have not done great in this container. So I've got to figure out a better solution for this. Uh, it doesn't look too bad right now. Of course, we had the rain, so all the annual containers look pretty rough, but I will probably use different plants in this next year. In this space, we have a lot of the tropical sun patients, which are a really nice pop of color under the shade of this sweet bay magnolia we have right here We've got some ferns here these are ghost ferns um, that are really beautiful and under here you'll see that there are more hydrangeas these are tiny tough stuff and they bloomed out on the bottom here they'll probably continue blooming throughout the season but they get a little more shade than i think they like and so they don't bloom or repeat bloom very well for me but they do reliably bloom in our zone uh, even over the tough winter we had. So if you have a cold zone uh, that you are having trouble with hydrangeas blooming, I've heard these do really good in colder parts of the country. They just need a little more sun, I think, to be happy. We've we'll got some must still be under here. This is little visions in pink that's bloomed out and some hookera here along the pathway. Uh, I always forget the name of this one, but I really like it because the leaves are orange kind of when they emerge. They turn a little green later. Just really beautiful and striking. There's a Carex in here called Feather Falls, along with some purple Heuchera, along with some black Liriope right around in here. These containers, because of the storm, are also looking really rough, but this plant is Cherry Drops 
uh, coleus. It is a 2024 proven winner's perennial, but it's not, it's finally dropping a little bit now that it's got a, so big, but I think it's because it's flopping um, rather than just intentionally dropping. If you're familiar with chocolate drop, it grows down quite a bit uh, and actually drops. So this one before this week and before all this rain we have wasn't dropping so much. Still kind of beautiful, but uh, it is a monster. You can see there's one plant in this container, and both a, one here and one there, and is completely taken over this container. This is a sweet potato vine by Proven Winners. It's also new called Red Hawk. It's been really beautiful here on the corners of these planters. This is Bermuda Beach Supertunia, which is looking rough from the rain as well, but a beautiful pinky coral color. We got some Imperial Blue. Uh, verbena here, more of that saffron finch yellow, which is really gorgeous. And I think that's about it in these containers right now. There is a diamond frost euphorbia poking through here, so I guess I planted one of those and it could not catch up with this coleus. I've really loved how this bed has aged over the years. It's looking really, really beautiful. We have a hedge of hit coat lavender, which has done really well for me. I typically wait and prune it or cut it back until spring. Last year, I cut it back about halfway because it tends to trap a lot of leaves over winter. And then I cut it back more in spring. And then we had a really tough winter. And I did have some of them die out a little bit. The plants are all still alive, but some of the root or the top crown of the plant died. So I don't know that I would recommend pruning it in winter. So it's been here five, six years. It was one of the earliest things I added to the garden. And because I had that experience with it, I would wait until prune it until spring. We have a butterfly bush here that's looking really good. I don't remember the name of it. This would be one of the Pugster series. It stays really small and it is really loving this spot right here. This is east southeastern facing. So the sun kind of goes over here and goes on the south side of the house, but it's doing really well there this year. Last year we had some die off or in this over winter we had some die off and it was cut back severely but it's bounced back really nicely. I filled in with some annuals here. These are begonias, obviously, and some iris. Millennium allium. This is a uh, ornamental oregano called Drops of Jupiter. It's really beautiful. Flopped a little bit because of this rain, but typically it's standing very upright. Nice chartreuse pop of color here in this perennial border. More Millennium allium. And then we have a really beautiful new hydrangea called Tiny Quick Fire. Stays relatively small. It's a paniculata. It's already bloomed. It started blooming super early along with my Annabelle type hydrangeas or the arborescence. And now it's turning a little bit pink early as well. Uh, and it's almost kind of blooming out and it'll start continue to rebloom throughout the summer. You could probably give it a shear if you want, but I like to let the blooms age in place. We have some Hakanakloa. This is all gold, I believe, in this area. So they're liking it under this Japanese maple. Uh, they're protected a little bit. These over here that are getting a little more sun are burning quite a bit. Not terribly, but this is also their first year in the ground. So we have a little trio of boxwood here. This is a green mountain and green velvet combo. I think one of them's green velvet. I think it's the one that's slightly bigger here, but these are green mountain intended to be pruned in pretty tight spheres. Then we have some sun patients and these have done gloriously on the south side. Like that right there is one plant and it was planted from a little plug uh, about the middle of May. And you can see how much they have loved this space. Uh, there is a little bit of drip irrigation in this bed. It's not as substantial as some of my other beds just because it's been reworked over the years and this bed does get a little more sprinkler spray, overspray than some of the others. Uh, but they're doing really well. You can see them there too. This is Autumn Joy Sedum and it has really loved this location since we removed the blue spruce here last year. So there was a blue spruce in this location shaded out and took up all of this bed right here that you can see. This Sun Joy Autumn Sedum or Autumn, this Autumn Joy Sedum was not getting enough sun previously, but since it has been moved and it can get sun nearly all day, except in the late evening, it's really, really loved it. Got some arborvitae here. This is Fire Chief that I planted this spring, dotted in here, and I really love that nice different color that it adds to the landscape. Uh, it's striking with the contrast in these dahlias that I have. This is Purple Illusion. 
Then we have some of the newest Still Be By Proven winners called Dark Side of the Moon. And they have really beautiful pink blooms. They're all bloomed out for right now. Obviously, it's heading into summer, so the Still Bees are... Uh, blooms are fading and those could be cut off but they also make nice winter interest so I leave them all season until spring. Down here at the bottom I get a lot of questions about this grass. This is just a liriope. Um, so it's also called a monkey grass is what I, we always called it back home. We have some, a lot of annuals in here to fill space. This is a Bracken's Brown Beauty Magnolia and you can see how beautiful the back of those leaves are. Uh, that nice brown color and they can be cut on or pulled off the tree and used to make wreaths or in arrangements uh, and has grown quite a bit just this spring. It was planted from a container and you can see how much growth it's put on if you go back in my videos. I think we got this planted late March and you can see how small it was then. Lots of annuals in here, as I mentioned. This is blue suede shoe salvia. These are looking really good. These are starting to come out of a lull that they had. Not sure what was going on, but they're finally picking up here. Um, you can see even the impatience or the sun patients on this side of the magnolia are doing good, and these over here were struggling a bit. So, not sure. Maybe some nitrogen issues from where that tree was at. Uh, there is drip here, so it's not a watering issue, I don't think. But uh, it's a really beautiful combination of plantings here. These are bubble bath alliums. Uh, they're nice because they're a little bigger than millennium. The heads on them, two to three inches, I think. So they look more like annuals you would plant or alliums you would plant from bulbs for spring blooming. But they're perennials, so they come back each year, have nice grassy allium foliage that's really nice texture in your garden. Uh, pretty rabbit and deer resistant because it is an allium, so it's an onion. And we'll just continue on this way. We've got some back in black sedum here, which is looking really beautiful. There's also a striking set down there. Uh, another arbor vitae. This is Little Giant, this big one kind of behind this grass. I really love these. These have been in my garden. I just transplanted them this spring, but they've been in my garden. One of the first things that I planted probably five, at least five years ago and they have been perfect. I moved them because I redesigned, they were on the front of the house and I redesigned that garden bed space and I didn't, these didn't fit into the garden design. Uh, but they've been really strong performers for me in my garden and all arborvitae tend to do really well in my zone and garden, I think. This is Cheyenne Sky grass, really beautiful. Uh, this is also the best year I think it's ever had. Since we got out the blue spruce, everything in this bed that's surrounding it has done incredibly well. There's a viburnum called Brandywine back there that has beautiful berries on it. Um, they haven't changed colors yet, but it just finished blooming and those can turn blue and purple, which is really nice. We got some Yuki Cherry Blossom Dutzia. This is a high, Dutzia, if you're not familiar, is a hydrangea relative. Uh, but it blooms very early spring and then it's just kind of a texture of nice low ground cover type foliage uh, the rest of the season. This is an Anna's Magic Ball Arborvitae, so that nice chartreuse kind of pop of color here is a nice combination against the back in black sedum there. That's just really striking. I just really love that sedum. We've got some St. John's wort in here. This is a Monrovia variety. I'm not familiar exactly with the name. I can't remember this one right here. It's also a Monrovia variety. And this is an endless summer variety called Cobalt and Blue. And it's blooming, so it'll get some little blooms on it as well. But it has a nice blue type foliage, almost like a rosemary or a lavender. But really nice combination around these annuals. This is a Wygela. I really love Wygelas in our zone. They're a nice azalea alternative, but you can get some that have really interesting foliage. Like this one's called Midnight Sun. It emerges green in the spring, but you can see the green leaves inside. But as the leaves hit sun, they take on all these different colors. Red being the primary one, but you can see orange and yellow in there as well as the leaves transition to this darker red color. Really, really beautiful. This is a blue kazoo spirea. Um, you can see how blue the foliage is and also a nice color contrast against this back in black sedum. Really striking as well. 
some variegated iris and then this is a YG Gila as well called Checkmark Trilogy. It's completely bloomed out for the season because YG Gila's bloom, like I said, kind of as, as an azalea alternative in our zone. So early spring and I cut it back quite a bit. Um, I may have cut it back spring. I can't remember. I think I cut it back late last year, but it's bushed out really nicely and become much more fuller since I did that uh, last year. I've got some yarrow in here. This bed has no drip to it and gets pretty dry. So the yarrow is kind of aging out a little bit. We have some more back in black sedum up front. This bed needs to be reworked. These are pin cushion flowers and they're really beautiful. But I had so many of them, I kind of stuck them in between these rows of yarrow and black and back in black sedum, and now they look incredibly weedy to me. So I would remove those and put them elsewhere in the garden if there's an open space. But otherwise, this is a really nice, uh, beautiful bed with uh, sedum and yarrow. This is looking a little wild just inside the gate here. We've got the Boscobel Rose by David Austin, which is reblooming quite nicely here. Uh, this hydrangea, which I've mentioned in videos before, is one of my favorite. It kind of turns a little ombre, really gorgeous, striking color. I planted it from like a four inch container, I think, or a three quarter gallon container that I ordered from Proven Winners. And it is really, really lovely. And it's called Zinfandel. Uh, and they no longer produce it, so you can't find it. You might be able to find it online, someone that still has one stuck around. But it grows really well for me and the aging blooms uh, are almost purple it's it's kind of incredible i've never seen another hydrangea like it but so if you see it online i would recommend you grab it uh, we did have a lot of rain you can see how upright the stems are standing so they are pretty strong and it's done really well for me in this location in the south facing this echinacea is called lovely lolly and i really love it it is really lovely look how beautiful and pink this bloom is they got a little water on them but they're almost like straw flowers they're really um, rough the petals are real roughly and i think they would do really wonderful in arrangements for quite a while if you needed them to so this is a bobo hydrangea one of my favorites uh, really floriferous this one i grew uh, from a tiny tiny container as well so it's been here several years and looking good right now flopping a little bit because of the rain Bobos don't have the strongest stems, but they do have a ton of blooms, and that's what you buy them for. Down here at the bottom, my new favorite Carex, I've showed you already in the garden since I've been shooting this tour, is Feather Falls. It just gets really large, blows really nicely in the wind, but it's really striking for contrast against nearly any other plant because of its white variegation. The vegetable garden is looking pretty wild right now. We've got the dahlias that are still blooming their heads off. I put some more of that solar power Ipomoea sweet potato vine in here for a nice pop of color. Uh, and then we'll transition over here. We've got some more boxwood hedging that I started from four inch containers a couple years ago. So eventually those will grow up and be a nice little hedge that will look similar to this one. This one's just now starting to become a hedge. Uh, it'll be another year or so before it's fully in that hedge form, but it can be pruned nice and tight to a um, nice border here along the vegetable garden. I did add um, clover to this vegetable garden space last year, and you've probably followed along on that journey if you're not new to my channel. And I have really loved it. It suppressed weeds really nicely uh, in this area. And that's what I wanted it for, was a weed suppressant. Uh, you can see there's still a few grasses making their way through here. But I come back and cut it a few times a year with the mower or the weed eater. And it grows right back and looks really nice. We have lots of peppers that I need to come pick uh, from the garden before I leave it but they're looking really good. They really love this location because it's southwest facing kind of here on the corner of the house. And these are my metal raised garden beds that I love so much that I've done really, really well this year now that I've had them on drip irrigation. We'll continue down this border. This border I started last spring. Um, I started the actual flower bed the fall of 2021 
after the fence was put in. But I started planting heavily in this bed in the spring of 2022. So it's just over a year old. Uh, this is a lemon squeeze grass by Proven Winners. Really striking and looks really nice this year. I had to plant it from a four inch container because I haven't been able to find it locally yet. And another one of those Midnight Sun Wygela in front of it. So you can see that color contrast also really nicely here in the border. We got some Cat's Pajamas Nepeta, which are looking kind of rough this time of year. Could use some cut back. This is the little Galaxy Agapanthus that Proven Winners came out with, which is one of the first Agapanthus Hardy in Zone 6. So it will come back for you year after year, but it's nice and short. It's not one of those hugely tall Agapanthus. And you can see it's blooming right now perfectly at the end of July. Really nice. This is Perfect Profusion Salvia. It's been cut back once this year, and you can see it's reblooming pretty well. Salvias have never done incredibly well in my garden. I'm not completely sure why, but this one has rebloomed and it's actually going out of bloom for a second time, so it's looking pretty good. This is a peony. Uh, I think it's called Canary Brilliant, so it has yellow flowers. It's a, an Ito or Ito peony. We have a blue chiffon rose of Sharon. You can see what those blooms look like there. Isn't that nice? Coming down the perennial border is some echinacea or coneflower called White Perfection. You can see how perfect those blooms are. Whoever picked this name did a really, really good job at it. They're highly petaled, but really striking, pointy, perfect blooms all over the plant. You can see they emerge with a little more of a green center here, and they turn a little more yellow as they continue to open up. The cherry chocolate hibiscus is looking rough from the rain this morning as well, but it is also blooming its head off right now uh, during almost summerific week for proven winter. So these bloom, of course, they emerged pretty late. Mine got started a little earlier, but it's still blooming about the exact same time as usual in the garden as it did last year. If you're in the lower states, yours may have already bloomed out, but here in Southwest Ohio, they're just getting started. So they kind of progress up the country in the hotter zones because they emerge sooner. And then they'll bloom out and be done for the season. But I do like the foliage on this one. It's kind of dark. There are some darker varieties, but it's a nice contrast in your perennial border, of course. Got some serendipity alliums down here, which are looking really great this year. Really impressed with that variety and this yarrow which is soaking wet and i wish it was more beautiful for you for this tour is peter cottontail maybe you can see here but this yarrow is kind of like a fat baby's breath as best you can explain it and it just looks really really nice in a perennial border and great in cuttings as like a baby breath alternative for flower arrangements uh really really nice plant there this is a red obsidian banana, and it is an annual in our zone. You could dig it up if you wanted to and take it in the basement. I'm typically not committed to those type of things in the garden, or that committed anyway. But it's a really nice striking uh, texture here, right in the corner of this perennial bed. Behind it, we have a rose called Rise Up Lilac Days. It's a climbing rose by Proven Winners. You can see it's still reblooming. This was planted from a four inch container when I planted this border a year and a half ago or so. Probably, no, it would have been just a year and a couple months ago. And you can see how vigorous this rose is and it looks also really great. We do have a little bit of insect damage, but otherwise really incredible performer. Definitely a winner. Uh, this is the only one of the Rise Up series that I have right now, but I know that series is definitely a winner based on what I'm seeing so far. I have a bed with some blueberries in here. Uh, the blueberries are all gone. I picked a couple of them. There's also some strawberries down here, but the birds may have had a feast on the rest. This is a Calamantha called Marvelette, and it has blue flowers. Over here, we have a Calament called, uh, it's just a species variety, so it's just Calamantha. Uh, and it has white flowers. And this is a rock star performer for my garden. Blooms nearly all summer. Looks like this since it started blooming a few weeks ago. And it will continue like this and I'll cut it down in the late fall. 
uh, and then it'll come right back in the spring and solidly perform for you. In this area, we have some more of that white perfection echinacea, which if you don't have this one in your garden, certainly seek it out. It is a nice dramatic pop of white around anything else in your garden. We have some roses. These are uh, Italian ice, I think. This one has a really nice red foliage on it now that it's starting to regrow a little bit. Uh, this is a boxwood topiary. This is just green mountains uh, trimmed into a sphere. We have some more boxwood down here, and these hydrangeas in the center are called wee white. They're a nice short arborescence hydrangea that have done pretty well in my garden. You can see they're bulking up. These were planted from four inch containers. Uh, and you can see there's also lots of weeds in this bed because we've been really busy with moving and I have not been able to, uh, to get out here and weed like I typically would before my annual big garden tour. This phlox is called opalescence. I really, really love this phlox. Pink, uh, reblooming. It does produce smaller blooms after, when it starts reblooming, but the initial blooms are pretty large and really, really nice and beautiful. This is one of Proven Winner's new reminiscent series of roses, reminiscent white. Um, and it's really nice, even though this rose is wet. So I've told you, if you've been following along, I had a rose in my garden called, um, what was the name of it? I can't remember, but it was a white David Alston uh, rose. And it looked awful when it got hit with water. It turned brown and mushy. This one, even though we had rain yesterday and we've had rain today, it looks still really white and that's kind of impressive so i've kind of avoided white roses since i had the issue with the david austin one but this is really really nice and striking here this is a yjila as well you can see why i like yjila lots of different foliage colors so even though they may bloom in spring you may or may not buy them for their blooms but you can get some really nice striking texture and foliage in the garden uh, for color regardless. More feather falls grass. You can see I've tucked those everywhere because I love them. This bed is full of oh so easy double pink roses and they, I never got around to pruning them back so they could rebloom better. They don't need to be pruned to rebloom but they would obviously if they were fed and encouraged to rebloom by pruning. But you can see what the color are there. They're nice uh, pink and they do they are double. They are, are landscape rose so um, and they got tons of blooms on them that to rebloom. But I would just encourage you to come through if you have time and cut them back. Give them a little feeding and then they'll do much better. A little more hedge of tater tot arborvitae down here on the bottom. This is the same ones I've showed you earlier. I have them all over the garden because I really love them. They're similar to that green little giant that I showed you. Little Giant gets three to four foot tall. These were originally supposed to get one to two. Proven Winners have since changed it. So they may be, end up becoming a similar size to the Little Giant and a similar look as well. This is a little perennial border here. We have some sedum here. This is, I think it's called Margarita. Um, it's by Terra Nova Nurseries. It's really interesting looking. The flower heads are a little different than other sedums, which is really striking. More of the serendipity allium down here. Um, this is a birch leaf spirea, which looking kind of rough, but I had it in containers for years and got it planted out. And I think it's finally getting an established root system to look nicer. This is another one of the pugster butterfly bushes of the series. This one's white. Uh, really nice. These echinacea, which I think I passed by up there, are called one in a melon. And they're outside of their normal bloom period. But I've showed you in videos over the past several weeks these echinacea. They have massive blooms. You can see how big the cone is opening up there. And they're looking a little ragged in the heat we've had. But a really, really nice one if you can get your hands on it or order online if your local garden center doesn't carry them. Really, really striking echinacea. Here we have more of the serendipity allium. You could tell I love alliums in my garden, both for the texture and the blooms. Uh, and they're just a workhorse. If you don't have them, definitely consider adding them. Uh, they are an onion, so they don't produce like an oniony smell unless you're digging around in them, though. So don't be concerned that your yard's going to smell like onions. But they're a nice rabbit deterrent. Uh, and rabbits won't feast on them, hopefully. Rabbit resistant. Animals will eat anything if they're hungry enough. 
Here is a Winecraft black smoke bush uh, re looking really beautiful. You can see the earlier foliage from the season has turned really dark purple. Uh, the new foliage that emerges is a little more burgundy, but still really, really striking. There's a limelight hydrangea that I planted here several years ago, looking a little floppy from the thunderstorm. Limelights don't have the strongest stems, um, but they are one of the older ones. They actually is an improvement called Limelight Prime that I'll show you in a moment that's supposed to have stronger stems, but mine's not as old so it's still not developed a really robust stem, stem structure but they're just now starting to come into bloom limelight is the daddy of the hydrangeas the paniculatas really large blooms that fade to pink in our zone it depends kind of on what zone you're in or what area of the country some areas get too hot and they may just turn brown out ours tend to turn a little pink as we head into falls so you can see they emerge a little green then they turn white and then they'll age to pink. These are Millennium Alliums. These have been in the ground probably longer than a lot of the others in my garden, so you can see how full they are. Really love them. And here we have a proud berry, coral berry shrub, which is one of my favorite. The leaves kind of look like eucalyptus uh, a little bit. You can see them growing along the stem here. They're a nice blue color, uh, but they produce these gorgeous pink berries. And you can actually see the berries starting to be produced here. So they have these tiny, kind of like insignificant flowers that are pollinated. You can see there's a bee hovering around here now pollinating all of these flowers and it has a huge berry set and fall that can be used to um, they look gorgeous for quite a while in arrangements. I've used them for those purposes but really nice shrub here and it grows really really well in our zone. You cut them down about 12 inches to the ground in spring, remove all the old limbs and then they flush back this big every year. This is the Blue Shadow Father Gilla, uh, really gorgeous shrub. You don't plant it for its blooms or anything. It's planted primarily for its foliage. It has this powdery blue foliage. It did rain on it, but you can see back here what the foliage typically looks like. Uh, and really nice striking contrast for your garden. On the bottom here, we have some Heuchera, some Carex, some Cat Mint. I'm not sure the variety of this one. It's a larger one. And then we have a hydrangea called Pinky Winky. And it's looking really, really good this year. So the blooms on this one are not quite as big, but you can see how big the bloom on this Pinky Winky is going to be. This is going to be a good year for the Pinky Winkies. We've had a lot of rain, but look at that. Huge, huge blooms. Down here at the bottom, there's a hookah called Red Rover, which has done incredibly well in our zone, even in full sun. So very, very beautiful hookah uh, that typically are part shade plants. If we move down here, we've got some spireas. I think this one's called Big Bang. I'm not sure. It has really big blooms on it. Over here, we have one called Candy Corn, which is getting probably a little more shade than it would like right now. Uh, these hydrangeas have gotten really, really large. And then we have more of that white perfection echinacea, which I've stuck everywhere because it is just a beautiful pop of color. We come around here, we've got some golden ticket privet, which is a beautiful privet by Proven Winners. It turns really striking in the sunlight, so you can see the ends of the foliage there nicely tipped in yellow. We got one more of those little giant arborvitae that I transplanted that's doing really well here. And then this red bud's really gorgeous. It's called um, Rising Sun. And right now it doesn't look great in the middle of summer, but in spring and fall it looks really wonderful. All the foliage emerges yellow or a dark orange. So you can see all the new growth here is darker orange and then it changes to yellow and then it changes to green. So in the spring it's really striking. In the fall right now when it's it's the hottest part of the season, so it's not putting on a ton of growth, but as the season progresses, it'll continue to put more growth on, and all that new growth is that color, which is really, really nice. Here we have another blue chiffon rose of Sharon that's looking really great. Some more of those one in the melon cone flowers, and this is Limelight Prime, which is the improvement on Limelight that's supposed to have stronger stems. Now, like I said, this one's still relatively small, so it's kind of floppy, especially in the rain that we had today. But as this one develops, you can see these stems are actually really strong. On regular Limelight, this one would probably be falling over, but you can see how strong that stem is there. So as this one continues to develop, it'll have stronger stems. Of course, prune uh, by a third in the spring for stem uh, thickness, and then your hydrangea will stand much more upright as it develops. 
Heading down this way, this is another Limelight Prime. We have more of the Proudberry Coral Berry, which I kind of just tucked in between these oaks here. These are an oak called uh, Kindred Spirit, and they only get three to five foot tall, or three to five foot wide and 20 to 30 foot tall. Nice privacy screening tree or a specimen tree to add to your garden. They do produce acorns, so you can see the tiny little acorns being developed there, but a really nice accent tree for your garden. We have an Arctic Sun dogwood here that's filling up the space, finally starting to grow and put on some growth. I had to plant it from a four inch container because I couldn't find it locally, uh, but looking really good now. Around the patio, we have a hedge of Bobo hydrangea which are looking are starting to look really good. They'll continue to produce blooms. It's one of the most floriferous hydrangeas, which I've told you several times on my channel. And I really love a hedge of these. Like I said, they don't have the strongest stems, so you can see the little flopping that they're doing here. But underplanted, there are some more of that red rover, rover hookra, which has made an excellent uh, border for me. In the fall, it looks like fallen leaves, which is really, really nice when everything else is turning orange and yellow in the garden. And then we have these limelights on standard, which just means tree form, here on the corner of the patio. And these look really incredible this year. Really large, really striking, underplanted by a boxwood. Uh, sphere here that needs to be pruned on to get it back in that sphere shape. Some more bobo hydrangea. And this is a Sunjoy Barberry. It's the upright yellow one. I think it's called Yellow Tower, Golden Tower, something like that from Proven Winners. And then we have a Nandina over here. This is Red Obsession, or just Obsession Nandina, and it changes this nice yellow foliage, or red foliage there as it emerges and ages a little bit to more of the green. Moving along to the last part of the garden tour, uh, this is a repetition of the same things in the bed I just showed you. So limelight, hydrangea, boxwood, sphere, and we got some various perennials in here with this beautiful Henry fountain. This is called the Grand Regal Tier. People always ask. I really love this fountain. It's a nice squatty fountain. It definitely looks bigger online than it does when it arrives, but it's a nice size to tuck into the garden. It has a beautiful sound, flows pretty well. Uh, then we have some boom chocolata. Uh, geraniums here, which get way larger than I expected them to. Some geums down here and some salvia. This is called Back to the Fuchsia, if you're wondering. Um, it has really beautiful flowers in spring. It's not the best rebloomer for me, but I really like it for its spring color. And I'll pop a picture on the screen of what this area looks like because the salvia and the geums bloom at the same time, and it's really striking. And that, y'all, is an abbreviated summer garden tour. Uh, thank you for following along with me in this garden, and especially for following along as we transition to the new property. We've been moving things there all week, uh, and it has been a ride. We got to get the rest of our furniture out today and gather a few last personal items, and then we will be fully moved. So, hope you follow me along on that journey. Be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.